Hey everybody, this is Steve from Two Lockable Guys, and it's time for our first ever giveaway contest. What a great prize package we have for you. We have a Larry Fleet stack of records CD, a couple of picks that were played by our very special friend and bass player for Larry Fleet, Eric Harley Brown. A special edition, not for sale, two likable guys t-shirt, Crazy Legs edition, and the set list autographed by Mr. Larry Fleet, Xander Wyatt, and our friend, Crazy Legs, Eric Harley Brown. To enter, just go to our Facebook page, like the post, tag a friend, and share the page. That's all you got to do. If you do these four things, you are entered to win. Crazy Legs, crazy gift pack. The last day to enter is May 31st, and we will be drawing the winner shortly thereafter. Man, do we have a great show for you today. We are two likable guys. This is the Two Likable Guys podcast. And first off, you doing all right today, Josh? Doing great, brother. How are you doing? Man, I'm doing fantastic. I would tell you a joke, uh, but I saved the joke and we talk about it when we get in here. And I'll just, just leave that there. There's a little, little Luke humor for everybody. Little Lukester story. Yeah, so it, that's going to be our joke of the day. A um, little funny story to go along with. But today we have uh, an awesome, may, one of the more uh, accomplished guests. We've had many accomplished guests. Today we have the bass player for Larry Fleet. And uh, they're currently out on tour with a uh, little uh, headlining guy. I don't remember his name. Morgan something. What was that? The, the he's he's the headliner of the tour. They say I don't I don't know that I've heard of him. Morgan, what was that? Oh, Morgan Wallen. Morgan Wallen. Yeah, it slipped my mind. I don't know. Just one of the huge touring <laughs> artists. Probably one of the biggest. You 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 really didn't know who Morgan Wallen was? Yeah, I knew. I would just uh, play it down because they have awesome opening acts. Yeah, that, one being that, that's it right there. Larry Fleet, man, Larry Fleet, Chattanooga based, lives in Chattanooga. He's not from around here, but the bass player for Larry Fleet, man, I've listened to some of their music. It's fantastic stuff, but let's get right into it with Mr. Eric Harley Brown. We have a treat today. I am excited beyond uh, words uh, <laughs> to describe. Uh, we have a rock star for, for lack of a better term that's pretty generous we, term there Steve. I, I i i don't know i mean if wait a minute play, I, I thought he played country music i did too <laughs> well I, I do it all i do both kinds country and west there you go that's a, well we have a country star country <laughs> musician star it's it's one and the only uh and do you go by, I've always known you as Eric Brown, but it looks yeah. like you go by Eric Harley Brown. Um, well, the Harley thing is actually um, almost kind of a double last name. I actually found that out. I never knew my, my real grandfather and found right. him a, a few years ago. And it turns out by blood, I'm actually a Harley. Um, Brown oh. is, is, is an adopted name. My, my father was legally adopted by his stepfather when he was about three. So technically Brown is not my blood name. Harley is my blood name. Wow. Uh, We're learning yeah. this stuff already. <laughs> and, and, and the, the, the coolest thing, uh, I, I feel like I'm living vicariously through, <laughs> uh, Eric's, uh, Facebook and Instagram posts. He is the current touring awesome bassist for the <laughs> one and only larry fleet yes. um, who, who is currently out on tour with the one and only morgan wallet yeah who else is who else is with you guys on that tour is there there's another it is, band it is um an artist named hardy 
um, who, who's a bit more um, a bit more rock. He's a bit more heavy. But all, all three of the artists are on um, the same record label, Big Loud Records. Um, wow. Which has Morgan Hardy and Larry and uh, Jake Owen is on there. And there's several other great artists on there. So it's almost like a, a Big Loud carnival tour. Um, Sweet. But, but it was pretty cool. I was talking to one of the production managers actually last night. We, we played in Oklahoma City last night. And he told me that, um, no, I'm sorry. It was our, our, our booking agent fly, flew out to come see the show. And he said, this is the, the second biggest tour in the world right now behind the Rolling Stones. Wow. Oh, Which yeah. Is pretty cool. who, wants to go, who wants to go see some old has-beens called the well, Stones? I, I'd like anyway. to if Mike can get me some tickets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if the, t- if the tickets were affordable. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess first off, um, I want to know how long have you played with Larry Fleet? Um, I I think we're probably coming up on about six or so years. Um, it, it's actually really interesting. You know, I I toured. I started. I was touring in high school when I was playing in high school. So I actually started traveling when I was about sixteen and toured for a long time. Got into theatrical work and a lot of different stuff, and then retired um to basically raise my son and and move back to chattanooga to start a business with my father so i was content i was done with the music business and um and it was probably about a decade or so later you know i got a call to come out and start doing some jazz work around town because there weren't a whole lot of upright bass players in chattanooga um yeah and so reluctantly i kind of did it you know just for fun and get a little extra cash to buy some cheat rock and you know stuck out to remodel my basement and so got got a call to come out and do this place uh called sky zoo out on brainerd road if anybody knows about that place and they would do yeah. this little deal and have a have a band out there um and so uh, a buddy of mine colby Tao, hired me to come out there and play with him and uh, the lead singer didn't show up so he said well i got this dude that just moved here to town um he said he's got a great voice uh let me call him up and so I called him up and uh ended up being larry and so we both kind of just met subbing together uh on this little rock gig at this you know crummy little bar and and um and then just became fast friends after that and then started um you know riding together and kind of just thinking about music and he had done the same thing he toured and traveled we both had record deals and you know both partied way too hard and did a bunch of bad things and we were content to be done with the music business um and then started writing with him and playing with him and we just decided to have fun and not worry about the business side of it. And lo and behold, after we started doing that, it was about two months later, he met uh, Jake Owen um, while he was doing a little solo acoustic gig. And and then three months after that, we're on we're out on the road with Willie Nelson and Allison Krauss. Wow. Holy yeah. moly. So it happened really, really fast. So me and Larry, you know, had been friends and really hadn't had any ambition to come back into the music business. It actually just kind of brought us back into it. So he and I, I guess, have been friends for, you know, about six years or so. But um, like I said, music was really kind of a, a, a side thought for us. I mean, we, we loved just getting out in the outdoors and just became really good friends. We'd go out and go ride mountain bikes and, you know, do whatnot and, and just have fun. And, and the music business sucked us right back in. Well, the cool thing I, I saw that uh, Larry Fleet had said was he said that when he got to play at the uh, the Ryman, mm-hmm. he said he said I got to go play at the uh, Opry with my with my my good buddy Eric. So yeah, I thought that was pretty nice of him. I mean, that's a pretty cool thing. So that was a pretty uh, special moment. He and I have uh, done a few shows. I I played the Ryman about sixteen times. Um, oh. And- um, and then I, I did one with, with Larry there too. And then, um, it was pretty cool. The, the, the grand old Opry thing was pretty special because we did that with just me on upright, Larry played acoustic and then, um, uh, Xander Wyatt, our guitar player played Dobro. So when you go to the Opry, it's kind of cool. They've got an amazing group of musicians that'll back you up. And we were the first people to decline that <laughs> wow. Wow. and we decided to just actually go old school we really wanted to yeah. do it the way it used to be done and we just went out there with three acoustic instruments and played to a, a sold out crowd and and got uh two standing ovations and we only played three songs um, that's pretty that's pretty darn cool and then it was kind of an, an, another intense factor is that we were being filled filmed the whole time by um abc that they had a film crew that was following us around for about two days for uh 
this uh, CMA special that uh, that aired right before um, the the big award show. So, uh, and, and you got to be on the your voice at least got to be on part of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Talk about changing my diaper. <laughs> yeah, my wife. My wife was real proud of that. My national speaking debut is about me uh, uh, pooping my pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> well, well, I, that that comes on home. I I have to tell a little story that happened yesterday. Is that uh, me and my son Luke? I've got a uh, two going on three year old. Oh wow! Um, yeah, I'm way too old to have a kid that young. So, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he's pretty awesome. And and he was he was he climbs up and down me when I'm sitting in a chair, and he was climbing up me and. And I had just, uh, we, we had had some spicy food earlier. So I had, I'd had, a, I'd passed some wind and he, <laughs> when he was climbing down, he said, Dada, you need to change your diaper. <laughs> <laughs> As we get older, that becomes more realistic, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. Yes. And I was like, all right, buddy. And I said, no, I don't have diapers. <laughs> he, he said, and then he was, he's smart enough to what he went, well, go take bath. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. But anyway, so, so you're married. Yeah. Yeah. I've been married for, uh, 24 years. Holy uh, crap. Yeah. So I got married pretty young. I've got a 19 year old son. Um, well, and wow. so, yeah, she toured with me and traveled with me for a while. And, and, um, uh, like I said, I basically, um, had them on the road. Um, when I, I, I was actually doing, uh, upright bass work for like off Broadway theatrical plays. Um, that's how I ended up playing the rhyming so many times. I actually toured with this, uh, one production and we did a three week, uh, residency up at the Ryman. Um, so I was, I was there for about three weeks in and out of that place every day. And so, but anyway, yeah, so she toured with me and this and that and the other. And then that's just when I ended up kind of retiring was when my, my son was born. <laughs> Yeah, we like to, uh, one of the things we've always liked to do as me and Josh as a show is, is we like to talk to people from Red Bank that have done yeah. uh, great things. The cool thing about you is that we, uh, I believe we graduated uh, from high school in Red Bank from, at not, did you graduate in 91? 91, baby. Yeah. 91. Yeah. I thought, yeah. Year of the storm. So, so, <laughs> oh, that was it. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember, you know, I, I remember we used to watch the, they made us watch the news in the morning and they would, they would talk about the, the desert storm and, yeah. and everything going on. And it was like, and everybody was like, we don't care about this. You know, like, <laughs> we watched it, but, like, but we were 17, 18, you know, yeah, that, living life. That was about the last thing on our minds right there. Although, I mean, I, I was in ROTC in high school, so I, I did I did get recruited pretty heavily to go into the armed services uh, right. after that. But I was like, I kept telling them, I just want to be a bass player. And they're like, oh, you can play bass in the Army. And I'm like, ah, this sounds like a trap. Play, yeah. play in the Army, band. <laughs> <laughs> I got a question for you. Uh, yeah, buddy. R RO at Red Bank, were you, who'd you like better, Sergeant Major Carr or Sergeant Major Howie? Uh, Carr. Carr. Oh yeah, I like I like Howie. Uh, I like I liked Howie. He was a good dude. Um, but I, I had a, um, several friends that were older uh, at the time. When I was like a freshman, they were seniors, and so um, we actually used to go over to Sergeant Major Carr's house. Um, he lived out near Chester Cross Park, and we would go out there, and he'd tell us all kinds of cool stories oh, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. So I I got a new respect for him, and a little bit more uh, I guess closer relationship with him that way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Sergeant Major Howe, you say, man, you ain't going to pee in my hand. Tell me it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> he was sassy, wasn't he? Yeah, it was like one of his favorite, favorite lines. That, and uh, I, was born at, I was born at night, but not last night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he was cool. I always dug him. I, I just didn't, I didn't know him as well as I did Sergeant Major Guard. Right. We had a nickname for uh, uh, Sergeant Major Carr. It was, because he, he was always real rough and mean. and Yeah. And so, man, he was yeah. we, we 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 always called him Sergeant Major Sourpuss. Is, <laughs> That's pretty accurate <laughs> too. Because he had had that that look on his face, like he was always mad about something. Yeah, he never I really smiled much. I never saw I never saw much of his teeth. You know, he's just always kind of it looked like he's mad <laughs> at the world. But, but I mean, dealing with us, I can't blame him for being so mad. You know. Yeah, that's pretty awesome, though. Uh, one of the coolest things about uh, following Eric on his uh, social media pages 
it's, it's somebody is taking some fantastic pictures of you on stage and, yeah yeah uh, that is the coolest thing ever like the lights i mean i just can't imagine um i've always wanted to like going up on stage and playing where you're loud enough for a a stadium full or a arena full of people can hear you play and yeah. cheer for you and do you still get nervous going up on stage no um no i, I really I, i've played so many shows i can't count i'm not now i'm not saying i, I get anxious um right. you know and none of us in the band all everybody in the band are just fantastic musicians and just professionals through and through but but you know so nobody gets really nervous but you're just kind of anxious you know it's just kind of yeah. like waiting for a race to start you know you're just ready to kind of get going and as soon as you hit those first couple of notes it's smooth sound and we just have a blast that's one of the things that we've gotten such a great response on this tour we were kind of curious because this is not our normal crowd we're, we're a little more old school country a little more soul um and and this is a little bit more on, on the poppy side and so we were curious how th this whole um crowd was going to take us and they love it just because we go out and have a great time and it's just i mean larry Wright's just amazing music everything we do is our own music except for a couple of covers uh and he writes all, all of the songs so um you, it, 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 it's cool just to see ahead. people respond to it and, and appreciate it did you uh are you one of the recording artists on uh his albums on the no we, I'm, I'm part of uh i'm now i have been it's just with the with the label it's kind of interesting now um the producer on both the records is um the world famous joey moy who's about one of the biggest producers in the world um and um got a bunch of big acts started and and one of the it's the interesting thing about nashville is a lot of times they they have a touring band and they have a, a recording band now the, the guys okay. that recorded on the record are 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 the top 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 players uh in nashville brian sutton Derek wells um if you're a guitar player i'm sure you guys know those names that they're two of the biggest in the business uh, the guy that played bass is dave rowe who played with jerry reed back in the 70s and this and that and the other but yeah. joey joey explained it to me and he said man it has nothing to do with you guys all y'all are awesome he said just scares me to death to play with band members and i was like well what what's that he said well <laughs> things just start going sour i can't just fire you you know or if something this and that's yeah. happening and i was like yeah i, I understand that. And, and unfortunately it's always been that way in nashville but um i i've done a bunch of recording with larry that is out there and um, we, we do have plans to do some things in the future that that will have oh, actually great. the uh, touring band on it. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, you ever do? Because, uh, I mean, I know I've searched to YouTube a few times and I know we can see you play live in, in, yeah. on a few different um, things. And that's always linked. I got to know. They call you crazy legs. <laughs> Why yeah. do they call you crazy legs? Well, it's turned into kind of a, a cult status thing now. We played in Oklahoma City last night. I think it was about fourteen something thousand people we played in front of, and and they started chanting that. And so, what the production manager starts pushing <laughs> me back out on stage, and, and I don't know. You know, when I get on stage, it's just kind of the um, the spirit just sort of moves me. So I just I just kind of get oh. in these grooves, and apparently I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't even think about it, but. I have a bunch of wild moves, apparently. Um, where I mean, my legs, they said, just going left and right and this and that and the other. And and actually, I think the first time somebody ever called me that was Dave Leonard. Do you remember Dave Leonard, Stephen? Yes, I do. Um, yes, I do. He, actually, he played with Larry and I for a little bit and about four years ago. I mean, he's out in L.A. now, but um, we were playing down in Houston, Texas, and um it's kind of a, it was kind of a lame crowd we just weren't having a good time so i had a couple extra beers in me and and just kind of started <laughs> having my own fun and dave kind of coined that term and i got off stage and people were like oh and that was amazing that was and i well, what did i do <laughs> they said what well, you just out there dancing and going at it and, the, and they said what what do you call that and dave said it's called crazy legs <laughs> <laughs> and so uh larry said man you need to go with that that's gonna be your brand now and i'm like okay cool i'll take it david leonard coined that phrase coined that uh, yeah. crazy legs yeah, so yeah. Did, i have to give him credit wasn't his uh he had a relative that was a, a very a famous dj oh yeah yeah it, it, um i can't remember the the guy's name but it was um, one of those he, he did um disco duck rick d's rick d's that was his uncle that wow. is his uncle. yeah yep. yeah that's, that's, his <laughs> that's uncle. pretty awesome 
<laughs> I remember people talking about that, and I was like, "Yeah, that's so cool." Yeah, and, Rick uh, Dees. I heard Rick Dees. <laughs> talk, we're doing top I'm, forty now. I'm I'm full of useless music knowledge. <laughs> Me too. Me too. <laughs> but it's good. Hey, do you get to throw? Uh, this is this is just one of my. Th- do you get to throw picks to the crowd? Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, you know, it's, I'm oh a bass player, gosh. obviously, so I, I use my yeah. fingers. But there is one song that I use a pick on. Um, actually, we open up the, the the show with it, and so yeah, I'll throw that out. And it's kind of interesting is they gave me a big old bag of picks now, and it's got Larry's logo and stuff on it. And so I just started throwing right. out a couple, and man, it was like throwing chum in the water. The, the sharks just came <laughs> oh, out everywhere. Yeah. Now it, it's like now I've got to do it because they're just screaming at you to throw picks. So yeah, I kind of get my oh. my rock star moment, you know, because you always see those pictures got cool yes. looking dudes flicking picks. And so now I'm trying to be one of the cool dudes flicking picks too. I was always the guy that waited till after the show that scrounged around on the floor um, near the stage looking for picks that people had missed and dropped and stuff. I did the same thing. I did the exact yeah. same thing. <laughs> I've got a nice I've little got- collection. Actually. I was a roadie for several years, and so I've got some from Eric Clapton and BB King and stuff like that. And so, um, yeah, I w- and I was collecting them when I was young too. So I was I was that little nerd in the front row as well. Hey, so when you're playing, do you do any of the backing vocals? We do uh, some, yeah, um, and we've got some great vocalists and stuff too. So singing is not my main forte. <laughs> well, um, right. I can do it, but I, I write a lot. So you know, my voice when when I'm playing, I play acoustic guitar. Not not on stage or anything, but when I'm singing and playing acoustic, it, it's it's more of an Americana style. So um, I right. do a little bit um, live, but it's I'll be honest, it's hard for me for my brain to do both playing bass and singing at the same time. Apparently, playing bass oh. and then playing drums are two hard things to do and sing at the same time. Yeah, it's kind of rough. Yeah, <laughs> and, and but especially my, my bass is playing. A... Yeah, my bass playing is kind of bouncy. Uh, kind of like Rick yeah. Danko, and so I'm, I've just not mastered that yet. That's something I'm working on. Josh is quite the drummer. He, he's. Uh, oh. uh, I tell people. Quite... I tell people I play at it. I don't. I don't play drum. I play at him. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. Do you sing while you play? Adam? Yeah, yeah, I sing. I, I do. do all, you really? I do, I do all right for bars. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to cut an album or nothing. <laughs> now, do you, do you find it's tough too, Josh? Do you find it's tough to play drums and sing? Yeah, and uh, actually now it's harder for me to sing not playing drums. Really? I'm up there like a Will Ferrell in Talladega Nights. I don't know what to do with my hands. So now, yeah, now you got muscle <laughs> memory going. Yeah. yeah. So, so if you're if you're singing, you need to be playing the drums. But if you're just trying to sing, it's like you don't know what to yeah. do with your hands. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. Know, yeah. When we go out to the bar and do karaoke. I'm, you know, I'm like a fish out of water, not knowing what. What to do, you know. so you're playing air drums while you're singing I guess, i'm thinking huh? about it anyway i try yeah, not to do that's it. Cool. <laughs> that is just the most awesome things ever i can't even believe that uh somebody and uh i didn't really i didn't remember this till you told me eric but you had uh you had been over here at the Links practice basement facility when in high school and such links links yeah, headquarters man. I did. Yeah, I, I'm an OG. Link, I'm an OG Links fan. You know. You um, yes. Yes. You know. I mean, obviously, and we were both great friends with you know Kevin Mills. Kevin uh, Mills. And, uh, yes. And he's the one that brought me over there all the time. I remember we go driving around in his old Honda Civic. You know, when you couldn't do anything yep. else. Uh, and yep, hanging out. Awesome. I loved it. Yeah, yeah, it was great fun. I remember uh, that time fondly. Um, Kevin was the one who always kept me interested in guitar. Um, he he kind of turned me on more to the um, oh this was back in junior high and stuff. And he would we would sit around and listen to Metallica's "Ride the Lightning." And he's oh, like, yeah. "Man, don't you get don't you get uh, inspired to play when you hear this stuff?" And I was like, "Yeah, I guess I do now. That's pretty awesome." <laughs> <laughs> I love it. He- he turned, I mean, he he and I were both huge Iron Maiden fans from back in the day. Um, you What's know, he, that, that, I you, think that was our common denominator that that struck up our friendship in, like, junior high school, is that we were probably a couple of the only Iron Maiden fans in seventh grade, you know. <laughs> do, you, do you still talk to Kevin? I do, I do. Um, not as much as I used to. I'll be honest, I, I have to really kind of credit 
Kevin was keeping me playing when I when I wasn't back in music full time is um, when I was running the business with my father, you know, and music was always still kind of on my mind is he and I and Dave Leonard actually every Wednesday night would meet up at Kevin's house and he had this this room downstairs. and We just jam. Uh, no vocals, no nothing. It's just 100 percent improv. And I really it really kept my chops up and then really revived my my love of playing. And I was like, man, I, I kind of still got this. I think I can still kind of do this. And, and so then that's kind of inadvertently what prepped me for doing what I'm doing right now. That's awesome. The last time I saw Kevin, I was coming out of the uh, courthouse, um, getting my, <laughs> no, I was getting my marriage certificate. Oh, okay. And, cool. and then, I thought it was going to be a cooler <laughs> story too. <laughs> yeah. no, and, and, and Kevin was on break uh, there at the insurance place. Uh, yeah. You know, as, outside smoking and i was like holy <laughs> crap that's kevin mills he's like hey man it was great i was yeah. like hey this is gonna be my wife and so he's like hey my wife's on facebook and so we i i kind of keep up with him a little bit through there i don't yeah, even know he hates so he I, hates social media he hates it with a passion yeah. i can't say that blame him sometimes but it's it's cool for me just to keep up with everybody and as a musician that's kind of how you connect but yeah he is yeah. Pretty, pretty much anti um you know, social media, but that's why I would always go over to his house every Wednesday night. And he's still one of my closest friends of all time. Yeah. I, I need to, I need to call him. I need to get in touch with him because he's, he's uh, a great, he's dude. pretty awesome. He's, always, uh, he's yeah, still he the exact same person. Hey, uh, back in high school, did you, yeah. did you play with anybody back in high school? Uh, yeah, man. Um, as a matter of fact, when I started playing out live, when I was 15, um, and the very first show I ever played was Notre Dame High School Senior Prom with a band called uh, Candlelight Safari. <laughs> Candlelight Safari. Oh, man, I remember that. Do you really? I, I remember that band. Yeah. yeah who, I was, who, that all was, who all was in that band? Uh, we had Jeff Height on vocals. Yeah. Uh, who went to Red Bank. And then Greg Nip, fantastic Greg, guitar yep. player. Who owns Pickers Exchange now right, right. Um, on guitars. Uh, one of my closest friends of all time, Kyle Walsh. Uh, on drums who's an amazing drummer he and i went on to I, I as soon as i got out of high school i moved with him to murfreesboro and we started a band called janie gray janie um, gray yeah that, i remember that, that name got, too man yeah that was me uh yeah. they got really really popular um but and then so then a guy named byron Irwin that played keyboards in that band but then right after that that band lasted for about a year and a half and and we started a band called the shift that had a, a amazing guitar player called chris ware in there uh, yeah. we played with a band called tanta maku hmm. back in the day and so that, that was the first oh, band yeah. i started touring with and and literally they would pick me up i think you know after school they would pick me up after school and we would leave to go on the road and there's many times where they actually dropped me off that monday morning <coughs> right before <laughs> five. wow yeah that's awesome yeah I, I, yeah I never really told many people about it in school because i don't know most of my friends you know, with the exception of like you and, uh, you know, Kevin and Damien Yance and all those guys. Um, that was yes. kind of close to the circle, but most of my friends went to Notre Dame. Man, I hadn't seen him in forever, Damien. Yeah. I had neither. Oh, I loved him. I loved him. It's, it, I did some work for him here, you know, probably <laughs> 10 years ago, but, you know, that's, that's been about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. yeah um, all these people uh, that you're bringing back to mind, you threw me for a loop when you said Damien. Um, yeah. Oh, he wow. and I tortured several teachers at Red Bank together. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, that's been kind of a theme. We had a, another guy on here that um, uh, that uh, coming up uh, that we're going to release a, a thing that had tortured some uh, Red Bank teachers. I think he yeah. even made him. I think he even made him quit. Made one quit. Yeah. <laughs> but he made one of them I might have quit. been in one of those classes. It was probably an art class or a drafting class. I'm not sure if he actually went to high school here or not. I think that might have even been like junior high days when he tortured. Oh yeah. Uh, Josh, did you go to Red Bank junior high? I, yeah, I went to Red Bank. I was a uh, class of '93, so I was a few oh, years okay. behind. So a bunch of bunch of the names I remember didn't really know too many people you know yeah. but I, I did hang out I, most most people i hung out with were older than me but, oh yeah. I, but yeah it seems like uh oh uh eric i remember um did you do you remember playing uh 
Riverbend in about 1990. Oh yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Uh, because I remember we played. That was that was the one. That was the that was the pinnacle of links. Oh was, yeah, was 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 we played the the Conoco stage. Yeah, Conoco I, stage. It was. I did the exact same thing. That Candlelight Safari played the Conoco stage. There we go. And I think you guys can you guys were playing after us. And I think I remember you setting up as we were getting off stage and stuff. Uh, wow. But I have a vivid memory of you there at that at that <laughs> gig for some reason. With my with my dangling earrings in and my mullet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the mullet. Now the yeah, mullets man. come full circle. So yeah, it has, a as a matter bit. of fact, ironically enough, yeah, yeah, Morgan sports a fine mullet, you know, that's his thing yeah. right there. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. when, you, yeah. when you get, when you make so much money and you get so much popularity, I, I think you can get away with it. Oh, you, yeah. But me just walking into Walmart, I, I'm, I'm going to get laughed out of the store. You know? oh, it, no. it's, a, it's a tougher sale. Yeah. It's a tougher sale. Unless it, you're a it, that's good. It's, 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 a tough sale. it's still socially acceptable around here. I, don't, I mean, <laughs> oh yeah. I, I don't know that it ever really went out of fashion. <laughs> You'd always go see some old boy by Suck Creek that had one. Uh, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Marion County. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I was thinking more of Rahia County. Rahia, I got you. Rahia. Yeah, Rahia. <laughs> I've never heard that. That's awesome. We've got. Uh, we always ask our our special guests one question, and it's kind of a silly question, and it has absolutely nothing to do with you or anything. But we yeah. always ask, "What was your first vehicle?" My first vehicle was a yeah. 1968 bug oh, electric, oh. electric blue bug that i actually i took the uh, back seat out of and loaded it with nothing but speakers <laughs> <laughs> so that thing it sounded like a just a rattling tin can coming down the road and that's uh, awesome yeah it was it was a great great car and until i uh ran it to a bridge on lower mill road <laughs> oh with a uh, chad monsier yeah, that, and y'all remember chad monsier i remember the name i oh, love that car this was, i love that car yeah that was uh, i mean you know first cars are always freaking awesome mine was just a big old piece of junk um a, a chevette and uh i think i remember uh, it yeah well after high school I, was, I started getting into painting cars and so in, in high school it was like a, a purplish brown and then I when I, I graduated, I got I painted it uh, bright yellow. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> was just, did you have it, that it, when it you worked went, at Sonic? Yes, I did for quite yeah, a while. I know I saw it. I know I saw it then. Oh yeah, absolutely. I thought for I sure. I, I thought for sure you were going to say you did the Eddie Van Halen Frankenstein uh, paint job on it. Oh, that would be cool. That'd be really cool. No, no, that was Joe Scarborough. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The, yeah. In the Pinto, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they chopped the he, top he, off of it. And I rode in that monstrosity. We I rode in that. Pinto. Oh yeah, yeah. He lived right across oh, the street okay. from me as I was growing up. So Did I saw really? I saw him do all that to that car, and I was like, Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, that's bad. <laughs> yeah, that's I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> if you, biggest if you biggest wanted, piece of junk there was. It, <laughs> that paint job was cool though, man. Yeah, man. It meant. Everybody loved seeing that thing go down the road. And I can remember going for a ride, me and Joe and a couple, probably my brother and somebody else, we all went to, we'll get in the way back machine for this one. We went nice. over to four squares to Woo see a movie. Paid a whole 99 yeah. cents to see the movie. 99 cent movie. Yeah. And then you, you get the Ruby Tuesday in. while you're over there too. Remember the Ruby Tuesday used to be right over there. That's been That's a while. That has been a while, yeah. yeah that that was I always that. remember that was a that's a big date date night. Is I'd take a girl to the Ruby Tuesday in the over ninety nine cent movie at Four Squares. <laughs> I I, re <laughs> I remember there was a uh like a, a a Japanese restaurant there for a long time. Oh yeah, yeah. Was, uh, what was the name of it? Camp Campai Tokyo was over there, wasn't it? Cam Campai Tokyo, I believe that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you are yeah, full I, of I, some use. Useless I, I, don't, I don't know. I, saw, I, moved, I spent a lot of time over there, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I moved from Chattanooga right after high school, literally about six months after we graduated. I was ready to get out, and so I moved to Nashville. So it, I, I missed out on some of the later stuff to come along. Right. 
Well, um, Eric, I, I did the one thing I skipped over on here is um, are you are you happen to be being you know a big touring basis now? Are you yeah? Are you sponsored by any equipment? Do you have like yeah. uh, certain basses or amps you have to play? Or I don't say have to. You you enjoy playing the best? <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got a um, I've got a deal with a uh, Paul Reed Smith guitars. If y'all know them. Yeah. Um, yeah. PRS. Yeah. Yeah, so I've got to deal with PRS. Um, um, most, a lot of the guys in the band have a deal with PRS, and I just picked up a deal with a, an, a boutique amp company called DNA Amplification, which is a David Nordschauer am, Amplification. Which he, David, um, was one of the original designers of S2, SWR bass amps and uh, the David Eden bass amps, which Eden's I've played for 25 years. Um, oh yeah. So just became an artist for them just about a month or so ago and um working on a, uh, a couple other deals right now with fender um and labella strings now what's the process of that how does one go about getting sponsored or becoming a an artist well like that? It, it, it's uh, obviously that i think there's a lot of multiple ways you can get into it you know if, if you have a good connection or a good in um one, one of the things with us is that we've just gotten a lot of uh, attention yeah um and so that has really helped and you know so obviously um a company wants to kind of tie them with 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 an artist or or musicians they think that represents their values um you know and that and that uses their products because there's a lot of guys that get endorsements and never use that stuff but right um, right so, so that's really what helped us it's just we've gotten some massive exposure over the past two years and um and really have gotten in with some really really good um a and r guys that, that have hooked us up with with some fantastic companies yeah that's cool man that's really awesome yeah so if when you get up on you know this is probably an uh an amateurish question but do you ever get up on stage and and i know they they do everything they can but is your bass ever out of tune well we've got uh, as a matter of fact old petty john he gets up there and he tunes them before we go um, but I've actually, I've got a pedal board that I actually run on top of my cabinets. Um, I don't use one that's, that's out on the floor. I actually have it up on top of my, my, my head rack. And so I've, I've got a little button. I'll just kind of hit and just kind of look at it and tap it. But I use flat wound bass strings, um, which oh. are a higher tension bass strings. I just love the sound. It just, it's, right. it feels right for me. And, and those things, you have to work hard to get it out of tune. Um, okay. You gotta, and, gotta really beat that thing, don't you? You really do. You got to make a mistake somehow big time to, to take that sucker out of tune. And, and so generally I very rarely ever have any, any tuning issues. I, 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 we've got a lot of redundancy factors. Um, when we go on and do shows, um, you know, just yeah. in case something messes up or, or an issue like that. And so, um, we're, we're pretty foolproof. Now we've got an amazing crew and, and our shows just run like clockwork. It's amazing to watch it. I mean, we 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 moved up about fifteen levels in the past four months. I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's awesome is uh, I saw that uh, I think um, I saw that a um, a third date in Nashville has been yeah. added. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're I doing. Don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't got, know if we uh, get this out before the uh, before that comes around. So I hope we do. Um, but. Uh, if we don't, it, it, there was there was a couple shows, and I saw that uh, there was another show added. So that's got to be pretty freaking amazing, getting to play some uh, home some homegrown shows like that. Well, it it is, and and it's it's also pretty amazing because they're all three sold out. There are no oh. tickets. Oh wow. Um, wow! Unless unless you hit a scalper or somebody, you know, yeah. some type of vendor that's bought up some. Um, that is the reason that there are three shows that we actually um mm -hmm. there was one only one show that was booked same thing happened when we played two dates at madison square garden um yeah. and, and the reason that there was two dates is because the first one sold out in 10 minutes um yeah and so they added another one and the same thing happened you know at, at bridgestone the first one sold out in 10 minutes so they added a second one and that one sold out in like 15 minutes and then the third one sold out really third, third one they told me sold out just on the fan club whatever that means oh wow yeah so you came here today to tell us you were going to give away a bunch of free tickets to the nashville <laughs> show <laughs> yeah y'all y'all stand no. outside and holler at me and i'll see what i can do for you <laughs> see, 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 yeah, see. I, i'm, I'm <laughs> sure i'm well, sure that would be awesome you know Buddy. i want to I know when y'all are going to bring the tour to lake winnie 
when when's, <laughs> when's that stop? <laughs> well, the carnival when... tour starts this summer. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's when we, that's when you know you've made it when you, well, when now you we, are, like we are, we um, are, we're going to be with Morgan, I think probably, I think till about the end of May, maybe early June. And we're, and we're doing some stuff with uh, Travis Tritt and John Party and a bunch of other artists, artists like that. But we are going to be starting a headlining theater tour this fall. Hey. Um, yeah. Sweet. So it, 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 yeah. So uh, if anybody out there, you know, wants to come check it out you will have time to buy tickets and stuff for that because it won't start till about the middle of September. But we're doing some really, uh, really, 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 it's just nothing but theater. So we want to do kind of a real intimate, like a like Tivoli-sized places. I got you. Yeah, so um, do you think you'll, are you going to, I know, how does that work? Can you, can, will they try to get a place around here? Because I know, I, I think I read that uh, Larry, Mr. Larry Fleet is from around here. Um, at, what at, he, or at least, he, or based he lived out of here. here or yeah, yeah he 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 lives here um and but he is originally from um uh, dixon county right outside of nashville okay uh, white okay. bluff white bluff tennessee area um yeah so he he's fairly fairly homegrown but um he he does live around here so i would love to play something around here but we've got um an amazing uh booking agent um that handles a lot the, of really really big right. artists and they're the ones that are in charge of all that because they they try to do routing and then you know schedule around other artists and so they, they want right. to keep this going where it's it's a common sense type tour you know what i mean oh, yeah. where you're not right you're not driving a thousand miles every day yeah like if you're coming to knoxville to chattanooga to atlanta you know <laughs> or you're not going from from Los Angeles to South Carolina, back right. to Los Angeles or whatever. Right. Makes sense. Right. Yeah. But hopefully, yeah, well, yeah, like I hope. said, uh, tell everybody to keep an eye out and uh, hopefully uh, we will have something close by this fall. Yeah. i tell you what, if, if uh, I will, I will, I will put this out there and, and I will make a uh, Steve, not too likable guy guarantee. If you guys, uh, if Larry fleet uh, with bass player, Eric Crazy Legs Harley Brown <laughs> come, comes to Chattanooga. I will give away a couple tickets to, to yeah, go man. see you. I think we can work I, out I will, something. Well, I mean, I don't. I'll buy them. I don't mind at all. I, and, I think and I'll give can, them away for. We can handle something. Yeah, if we get around here. So I'd really like to. Uh, I was trying to. I was. I was going to offer our listeners. Uh, I, I looked and I saw some uh, the other day when I was googling where I could get a a signed cd from larry fleet and i could just order it but that yep. was limited to the first 50 that were from his website so i was just going to order one and then give it away as a you know promotional thing but i couldn't get it um so uh i mean i would be willing you know i hate to uh, i don't want to put you on the spot or anything but i would love to get something signed uh by you uh yeah. to give away to, to some yeah. folks well, uh, I can get can, I can get something signed by the whole band if you want something. I would, um, I well, would, I would, I would, I would actually like two things: one for me to keep, and one to give away. <laughs> Dang, Steve, what <laughs> yeah. else you want? God, get greedy there, buddy. <laughs> Man, and I'm I don't, so greedy, I, I'm already at it. <laughs> I tell you what, I do not mind paying for it. I'll pay no, you whatever you want. I got, I got I, you, buddy. For an old friend, and for for you guys being so awesome, I, I can, I can definitely do that for you. <laughs> that's awesome I, i'm looking forward to it i mean because I've, I've wanted something especially from the first person that's ever been not only in the Lynx den but they've also <laughs> been at madison square garden playing <laughs> bass and music so cool I mean, it's just like the, there's the only one one person ever. in the world that has done that right that's true yeah, that's exactly i never right. thought about that yep. that's pretty awesome yep. only one so far <laughs> so <probably wasn't> <laughs> yeah. that's the that's I've the got... first stop on the Lynx reunion tour right it's madison yes. square garden yes. Heck yeah yep, that's where we're going <laughs> all right well we've had a lot of fun and i do want to wrap this up but there's one thing that uh, i wanted to ask you um because you're, you're doing so great man i'm so proud of you i'm so Thank happy you. for you i i Thank i, you. I I, I really, you, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. I mean, oh, I don't man. remember, I, I don't remember you ever being, having anything mean or anything. I always remember you being fun and outgoing and, and well, maybe Likewise, not so much Steve. outgoing, but happy to, you know, fun to be around. You'd always 
like there'd be an inside joke when you walked by them and by you in, in high school or something. They'd be like, you know, I don't remember. But the the the, the one thing uh, I would like to know: Do you have any advice for young musicians? Do you have any any advice for young guys trying to make it big? Um, and for what I've gotten from you, I would say your advice would be: stop trying to make it big and just have fun. Yeah. But, but well, because there. In my opinion, there is no way to make it big. Um, it, it just kind of happens or it doesn't. And, and you can't right. focus on, on making it big because you will not make it that way. Um, you know, the, the, the most if you want to be a professional musician in today's times, you, you need to be as versatile as possible. Um, yeah. You know, play as many kinds of music. I do jazz. I do bluegrass. I do rock and roll. I do R&B. I do country. And and. You know, one big lesson that me and Larry have told this time and time again um, to people is you just got to have fun. And if you're yeah. having fun and, and you're putting out good vibes and that kind of stuff and you're not being a jerk and you just have fun with the guys in your band, you're going to be successful. Um, but do not try to do it merely to be successful. Because Very it won't work that words. way. Yeah. Wise words from a great bass player and a super oh. all around cool guy, man. It's uh, it's been this is the coolest thing ever. I'm like smiling from ear to ear. Oh, uh, well, I've, I've had a just, blast. You guys, are, you guys are awesome. So it's just cool to talk about old times. I don't have a lot of people I can talk about that stuff too, but you guys yeah, well, are awesome. Thank you. Well, I hope we can do some more. Um, hopefully, maybe uh, what we can do is. Yeah. Uh, if the the tour does come closer to uh, Chattanooga at some point, when either if it's uh, a solo, uh, your your you guys headlining tour or whatever it may be, yeah. uh, maybe we can have you back on and and we'll talk it up again and talk about some Definitely. exploits from the road and and all the cool fun stuff you've done and and how uh, how do you I mean how do you well this is one good question I just <laughs> this is going to be funny. How do you fight off all the women that want to be with the band and stuff when you're married and you've got a, a wife to come home to? Well, the, the interesting thing is, is, is none of us are spring chickens. And I, I, I don't, you know, I don't think that most of these people out there realize actually how old we are. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we, we've kind of done that thing. I did that back in my 20s. And I'm not going to say how old I am now, which y'all know, but uh you know, it, it's just, right. it's not something that's important to us. And, and, you know, what's important to us is just doing our jobs and having fun and, 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 you know, setting the, the energy for the night. And so it, it's cool yeah. that people want to do that, but really when you get to kind of at the level that we're turning at right now, it, it's a lockdown situation, man. You, you can't, it's not like the seventies where you got groupies and stuff running around everywhere is that there's 9 million security guards, particularly with Morgan. Right. Um, they're they're oh. very, very tight. So, you know, yeah. nobody, it's almost impossible for anybody to get back there, especially to, um, you know, here recently, we, we have to do COVID tests um, every three days. So we have to pass tests and it's basically a COVID bubble. So, right. wow. Um, yeah, we, we don't worry too much about groupies. <laughs> <We're>, we <laughs> okay. just want to sit back on a bus and, and watch South Park and, you know, have a drink or something. That's awesome. Man, yeah. it's been a pleasure. Yeah. It's been it's been truly been a pleasure, and uh, I will get with you and uh, hopefully get some uh, uh, something to give away, and uh, we'll work that out. And, and yeah, and we'll take care of it. Man, you're awesome. I, I I hope I didn't put you on the spot with that, but no. I truly really appreciate it. No, no, you didn't put him on the spot. I need some free stuff to give away, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no. I didn't want it to come off like that. I can do anything for a couple Red Bank boys. I'm Don't worry about it. I'm surprised you yeah. said, hey, can I get a Morgan Wallen CD signed by him? Or, Lord, you, know? you wouldn't believe how many people ask us that. That's one thing, isn't that? That's just no. We're, we're all friends hanging out that, that's just what we don't do so oh yeah oh yeah yeah you know what uh a uh eric harley brown signed that's what i'm uh, saying a headshot or something you know, signed, well, eric, you, know. you want me to go get, get some glamour photos glab <laughs> no a signed, glamour shots a, yeah a signed yeah. cd with the silky glove you know Dan. under my chin yeah. <laughs> You can't, you can't go down no. to the mall and do that no more. No, no, the old days, man. I'm just saying that a signed a piece of stuff 
by Eric is more I got valuable. It, Steve. To I got me. it. I got you. <laughs> it's by, much more valuable to me than than a than, than a Morgan Wallen. Oh, um, uh, thank you, know, you bless man. Him there you go. There you and go. stuff, but but he doesn't have a uh, influence on my life like like you have. And so uh, thank you, brother. That's pretty good stuff. Awesome <laughs> stuff, man. Uh, <laughs> I send my. If you talk to Kevin, tell him I said hi. Um, I will I'll do send it. Your, send my best to your to your wife for having to deal with the rock star country. Excuse me, country <laughs> music star <laughs> lifestyle. <laughs> oh my! She's used to it. She's used to it. Well, that's awesome. And hey, we'll have to get together when you're in town and just just hang out with no no of course. Uh, no stuff and just maybe we can do that next time you're uh, in a couple weeks or something when you've got some time off. Yeah, yeah, let's let's do that. That'd be a fun time. That's a fun time. And I and I appreciate you guys. Like I said, uh, you guys are great. It, it's very cool to to be asked to do something like this. It's very humbling. Um and it's an honor. So thank oh, you. Oh man, we appreciate you. Yeah, it's all our it's all it, the honor's all on us, man. But thank you very much. Cool. <laughs> you well, Josh, did you have anything to add, sir? No, nah, man, I think we covered everything on, on my end. You know, I, I guess okay. I could sit and talk about technical stuff about the tour all day long, but nobody wants to hear about yeah. that. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, <laughs> so, we can do that another time. I'd love to do that. I love talking tour stuff. There we go. So, we, so everybody needs to go out and buy their uh, PRS, Paul Reed Smith, guitars, basses. Yeah. Uh, all that. And then the yep. uh, DNA, some DNA amplification. Yep, yep, and, yep. It's uh, all ha- handmade. And, and get you some labella strings while you're at it. Labella so, yeah. strings, all right. Flat yeah. wound. Got to get, gotta get, the, gotta get the crazy legs edition. They're extra That's crazy. What, yeah, maybe you can get on there and have the crazy legs edition and have a, a special line of uh, We're working base on equipment. It. We're, we're working on some of that stuff, there so I go. figure... This, this is my last shot, boys. I'm gonna make it. Well, there you go. As good as I can. <laughs> man, it's perfect. It's a, you're doing great. You're doing great. Thank you. You're on. Thank you. you. You're well on your way, man. I'm so proud. Glad I know you. Glad I know who you are, and uh, glad Likewise. you joined uh, uh, Facebook and 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 we got to catch up. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I'm trying to catch up it, to the modern world. Yeah, you know it happens. But anyway. Thank you very much, sir, and I hope you have a good evening, and uh, we'll, we'll I'll be talking to you soon. All right, boys. Y'all take care. Thanks for right. having me. You too, man. Appreciate you again. Thank See you. y'all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. This is Steve from Two Lockable Guys, and it's time for our first ever giveaway contest. What a great prize package we have for you. We have a Larry Fleet stack of records cd a couple of picks that were played by our very special friend and bass player for larry fleet eric harley brown a special edition not for sale two likable guys t-shirt crazy legs edition and the set list autographed by mr larry fleet xander wyatt and our friend crazy legs eric harley brown to enter, just go to our Facebook page, like the post, tag a friend, and share the page. That's all you got to do. If you do these four things, you are entered to win. Crazy legs, crazy gift pack. The last day to enter is May 31st, and we will be drawing the winner shortly thereafter. Man. Josh, did you have as much fun as I did talking to him? Oh yeah, man, that was uh, that was great talking to him. Eric, Crazy Legs, Harley Brown, dude, he is such a down to earth guy, man. I, I I have fun doing all these, but I really had fun talking to him. He uh, brought back some good memories, some good old Red Bank High School classmates. Check out our social media pages, and we're gonna have some good giveaways going on soon. As soon as I can get <laughs> so in touch with him, squeeze it out of him. Yeah, you know, I just, I had to. For you, I did it for you guys. Yep. I made myself look bad for the fans of the show. That, that's <laughs> how this works. I do everything for you guys. I love you guys. Thanks for listening. Um, Josh, is there anything you'd like to add? I uh, just appreciate everybody listening, man. Man, you can, you can, you can find us online. Two likable guys.com. You can send us some 
email if you want to at two likable guys at gmail.com. You can come to a, a wedding and dance and tell everybody how much you love two likable guys. Who's having with, a bunch of who's wedding? We're having a bunch of I don't know. I lost it there for a minute. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, no man, we we really like everybody. We, we like you and, and we hope you like us too. We are two likable guys. I'm Steve. This is the co-host. Josh. And we like you. And we hope you like us too. Thanks for listening. Later.